Contents I. The Great Secret 2. The Jews Reject 3. The Story The Authorship of the New Testament Books 4. The Numerical Code Systems V. Sounds, Animals and Illusions 6. The Family in the New Testament 7. The Author 8. The Creation of the Church How to Find Josephus as 9. The Proof that Josephus was really Calpurnius Piso X. The Inner Circle 11. The Truth Makes Free By Abelard Reuchlin I. The Great Secret For There Is Nothing Covered That Will Not Be Revealed, Matt 10.26, The New Testament, The Church, and Christianity, Were All The Creation Of The Calpurnius Piso, Pronounced Peso, One Family, Who Were Roman Aristocrats. The New Testament And All The Characters In It Jesus, All The Josephs, All The Maws, all the disciples, apostles, Paul and John the Baptist are all fictional. The Pisos created the story and the characters, they tied the story into a specific time and place in history, and they connected it with some peripheral actual people, such as the Herods, Gamaliel, the Roman procurators, etc. But Jesus and everyone involved with him were created, that is, fictional, characters. In the middle of the first century of the present era, Rome's aristocracy felt itself confronted with a growing problem. The Jewish religion was continuing to grow in numbers, adding ever more proselytes. Jews numbered more than 8 million, and were 10% of the population of the empire and 20% of that portion living east of Rome. Two approximately half or more of the Jews lived outside Palestine, of which many were descended from proselytes, male and female. Three however, Judaism's ethics and morality were incompatible with the hallowed Roman institution of slavery on which the aristocracy fed, lived, and ruled. They feared that Judaism would become the chief religion of the empire. The Roman author, Annius Seneca, tutor and confidant of Emperor Nero, suggested in a letter to his friend Lucilius, a pseudonym of Lucius Piso, that lighting candles on Sabbaths prohibited. For Seneca is later quoted by St. Augustine in his City of God 5, although the quotation does not exist in Seneca's extant writings, as charging that, the, Sabbath, customs of that most accursed nation have gained such strength that they have been now received in all lands, the conquered have given laws to the conqueror. The family headed by Seneca's friend, Lucius Piso, was confronted with an allied problem more personal to it. They were the Calpurnius Pisos who were descended from statesmen and consuls, and from great poets and historians as well. Gaius Lucius Calpurnius Piso, the leader of the family, had married Ariah the Younger, from her grandfather's name, Aristobulus. This made Lucius Piso's wife the great-granddaughter of Herod the Great. Repeatedly, religious-minded Judean zealots were staging insurrections against the Herodian rulers of Judea who were Piso's wife's relations. Piso wished to strengthen his wife's family's control of the Judeans. The Pisos searched for a solution to the two problems. They found it in the Jewish holy books, which were the foundation both for the rapid spread of the religion and for the zealots' refusal to be governed by Rome's puppets. The Pisos mocked, but marveled at, the Jewish belief in their holy books. Therefore, they felt a new Jewish book would be the ideal method to pacify the Judaeans and strengthen their in-laws' control of the country. About the year, 60 AD, Lucius Calpurnius Piso composed Ur Marcus, the first version of the Gospel of Mark, which no longer exists. He was encouraged by his friend Seneca Fiva and assisted by his wife's kinsman, young Persius the poet. Nero's mistress, later his wife, Papia was pro-Jewish and Nero opposed the plan. The result was the Pisonian conspiracy to assassinate Nero, detailed in the historian Tacitus. But this attempt failed when he aborted the plot. Instead, Nero had Piso and Seneca and their fellow conspirators executed by forcing them to commit suicide. He exiled Piso's young son Arius, spelled Arius Herin, who appears in Tacitus under several names, including Antonius Natalis VI Nero sent young Piso to Syria as governor. That post also gave him command of the legions controlling Judea. His own history records his service in Judea in the year 65 under the name of Jesius Florus, and in 66 with the pseudonym Cestius Gallus. 
the true authorship of the New Testament too. This Arius Calpurnius Piso deliberately provoked the Jewish revolt in 66 so he could destroy the temple in Jerusalem for the Jews were unwilling to accept his father's story and thereby become pacified by it as was intended. Point seven. However, his 12th legion was caught by the zealots in the pass of Beth Haran and almost lost. Nero's reaction was to exile him instead to Pannonia, to command a legion there, and to send Licinius Mucianus to serve in Syria and Vespasian to Judea to put down the Jewish revolt. Then in 68 Nero was assassinated by his own slave Epaphroditus VIII who unknown to his master was young Piso's lackey. Galba became emperor and named Piso's cousin, Licinianus Piso 9, as his intended successor, but Galba in turn was soon overthrown by Otho. Otho was then overthrown by Vitellius at which point Piso and his friends began to flock together against the latter. The Pisos and Vespasian and Mucianus and Tiberius Alexander, Philo's nephew, all joined ranks behind Vespasian to seek to overthrow Vitellius. Ten Arius Calpurnius Piso was still commanding the 7th Legion in Pannonia 11, Austria-Hungary, and Vespasian sent him, now appearing in Tacitus with the name Marcus Antonius Primus 12, south across the Alps to overthrow Vitellius. Meanwhile, the main body of Vespasian's legions marched overland under Mucianus from the east towards Rome. Piso succeeded in defeating Vitellius' army and secured Rome for Vespasian. Point 13 Mucianus arrived and promptly sent him to Judea to help Titus at the siege of Jerusalem. He did so, and in 70 they assaulted the city, then the temple, burned it, slaughtered many thousands, sent thousands more to slavery and gladiatorial combat and death. Then, Arius Calpurnius Piso wrote, in sequence, the following, Gospel of Matthew 70-75 CE present Gospel of Mark 75-80 CE Gospel of Luke, with help of Pliny the Younger, 85-90 CE. In the Gospel story he inserted himself by playing the role not only of Jesus, but of all the Josephs, as well. He particularly enjoyed assuming the identity of Joseph. Wishing to create a Jewish hero, a savior, in fictional form, he, and his father before him, felt the identity of a second Joseph secretly, but very aptly, fit them. For their name Piso had the same four letters, rearranged, as the four Hebrew letters, Yudvof Samik Fe, which in that language spelled the name Joseph. Thus they saw themselves as the new Joseph. That is why so much of the story of Joseph in Egypt is secretly redone and inserted into the Gospel story of Jesus. The Jewish Joseph, of Genesis, twelve brothers spices on the camels Joseph flees without his cloak from Potiphar's wife asterisk Joseph was sold for twenty pieces of silver brother Judah suggests the sale background was Egypt, bondage and slaying of the firstborn asterisk Miriam is sister of Moses, whose story is sequel to that of Joseph. The second Joseph Jesus, twelve disciples spices with the Magi asterisk the young disciple flees without his cloak when Jesus is arrested. Jesus is sold for thirty pieces of silver asterisk Judas sells Jesus asterisk background was flight to Egypt to avoid Herod's slaying of the male children, MT 2.13,16, Miriam is Jesus' mother the Jesus figure which Piso creates is a composite. He inserts redrawn elements from Joseph in Egypt and other Jews of the Bible elements from Essenic writings, and characteristics of various pagan gods. Piso plagiarized the Hebrew scriptures. Especially, he loved and borrowed freely from the prophet Isaiah, whose 44th chapter was most helpful. Piso's idea to make Jesus a god to whom to bow, worship and pray came from Isaiah 44.17, and the idea to 3. The true authorship of the New Testament Fishes in the Gospel of John and in the writings of the Church Fathers. The prophecies fit Jesus for the same reason Cinderella's slippers fit her feet. The Jesus story was deliberately written in such a way that it would fulfill the prophecies. In addition to creating Jesus in literature, Piso created for himself another FAM6 US literary role, that of a purported Jewish general and then historian, Flavius Josephus. As Josephus, he contended he had bravely led his fellow Jews in the war in defending Galilee against the Roman invaders. However, like Jesus, Josephus came only in literature, that is, in Piso's own writings. 
Under his fictional name of Flavius Josephus he also wrote, during these approximate years the following, The Jewish War 75-80 CE Jewish Antiquities, Jewish Archaeology, 90-93 CE His purported autobiography entitled Vita in Latin, which would be Bios in Greek, dash which is also fictional 96-103 CE Contra Apianum 103-105 CE Piso is known publicly in history only under his pen name of Flavius Josephus. He does not appear as Arius Calpurnius Piso. His true identity is decipherable only by reconstruction. With his father's death at Nero's hands in 65, the Pisos vanish from public Roman history. For the next 73 years they are busy writing the NT and tightening their power over the known world, but they appear only under alias names. They reappear as a family with Piso's grandson Antoninus as emperor in 138, and are thereafter known chiefly as the Antonines but not as the Pisos.